Next up, we are delighted to be joined by independent TD, Carol Nolan. Carol, thanks very much for being here today with us. Delighted to be here. Um, you're someone who's been on the front lines with a handful of other TDs and trying to keep this issue alive and trying to mitigate the worst aspects of the abortion bill. Can you tell us first of all about a bill that you introduced, the private member's bill, to try and give the unborn baby some pain relief if it is to be aborted? Yes, the bill was introduced to the Dáil a few months ago with the support of many independent TDs and also I want to mention uh, the TD Eamon O'Queeve, Fianna Fáil TD, Eamon also supported it. What it, it seeks to do is to enshrine and make sure that there's provision made for pain relief to be made available for a baby in the case of a late term abortion. We know from many reports, uh, including the UCC report, that we have a serious problem now where babies are, are being born uh, alive, but also there are late term abortions. And in terms of the late term abortions, there were 100 abortions in uh, 2019 that were late term. And those little babies did not s receive any pain relief. Now there are other jurisdictions such as France that do um, make provision for pain relief. So we're seeking to make sure that that is provided for. As politicians who are completely opposed to abortion, what we're trying to do here is to ensure that there's some little bit of compassion mm -hmm. um, for the little unborn child and to make sure that the unborn baby does not suffer. We know that the Animal Welfare Act makes provision for pain relief. So why not a little human being? Mm -hmm. um, wh why shouldn't they also be provided for? And that's really what the bill seeks to do. It's, it's pretty incredible that we've been reduced now to asking or pleading for that little unborn child to be given pain relief in a country that actually uses, say, potassium chloride and injects it into the heart in these late-term abortions, causing the baby severe pain. But it's not something that ever is talked about yeah. uh, in the media. And I'm sure you've experienced that as well in presenting this bill. The coverage really hasn't been there of what's a glaring injustice that Absolutely. that uh, one wrong is compounded by yet another wrong of yeah. um, ending the child's life and depriving it of Absolutely. any pain relief. I mean, yes, I, I was astounded. You know, I, I would consider myself a very reasonable politician. I'll take a stand on certain issues. And I think, you know, the right to life is non-negotiable. It's a fundamental human right. So I'll never make any apologies for standing on that platform and being one of the few women to do so. But what I found astounding was that my voice as a female politician was not listened to by national media. Mm -hmm. It was stifled. Um, I'm trying to represent, you know, three quarters of a million people who mm -hmm. voted no and who feel they have no voice. Mm -hmm. And yet our voice has been stifled. And I, look, like everything, there's two sides. And, and the right to life, as I say, is non-negotiable. But for a female politician not to be listened to, when they talk about women in politics and the importance of pushing women to the fore, well, it appears that you have to be pro-choice as a woman in order to have your voice heard or in order for fairness mm -hmm. in the media. And I would certainly see that firsthand every day as a woman who happens to be a politician and who happens to be very pro-life in mm. my views. And there's a review of the abortion legislation that's coming up and I think that you've brought certain information to light about the three-day waiting period that currently is in place with the abortion legislation. Can you tell us a little bit about that? That's more? correct. I did submit parliamentary questions on, on the three-day wait, waiting period. And what the questions showed uh, from the responses I received was that there was about eight, uh, between eight and 900 women that had contacted the HSC um, direct line in terms of availing of abortion. And during the three-day waiting period, they didn't proceed. So that clearly shows us that there were hundreds of lives saved, that uh, women did change their minds, that they did reflect on it. And I feel, look, this, th it's very important that, that that reflection is there. And it's very wrong that there's only one option open and given to women. We don't hear the option of adoption mentioned whatsoever. Um, it seems to be all one-way traffic and nearly pressurising women into feeling that they have no other choice but to have an abortion. That's mm -hmm. wrong. And at least lives were saved. You know, there were hundreds of lives yeah, saved. So it's crucial in that, that case. Three it's day absolutely crucial that it's retained. Yeah. Yes. And how likely is it to be retained, or do you think will the pro-abortion lobby uh, have it removed? The pro-abortion lobby will certainly look to have it removed with the help of many national media platforms. Unfortunately, 
um, you know, it's, it's just so wrong what's happening and it's so unjust. We're supposed to live in a democratic republic. But yet, if you happen to have a certain view, if you happen to be pro-life, mm -hmm. your views aren't heard and, and obviously the media won't, won't portray that or, or convey that in any way. Mm -hmm. um, apart from yourselves in Gripped, you know, I don't think there's any other platform that is genuinely trying to articulate the other side of this argument. And it, I think it's a sad day. Uh, in Ireland, a republic that that we don't hear the other side of the argument, and unfortunately, the the pro-choice lobby, you know, it seems to have the ear of uh, of media. It seems to have the support of national media, who are more or less acting as spin doctors, along with the National Women's Council, who appear to only hold one view as well, and who claim to represent women. Well, they certainly don't represent women like me. And so, as a politician representing so many people in your own constituency of Lee Shoffley, is it the case that this issue has benefited you from standing so strong on what are your own principles and have been your principles all along? Or have you paid a price? Because I know you were re-elected mm -hmm. in what was an expanded constituency against all the odds. Mm -hmm. And it seems as if you taken a stand at no harm whatsoever because people respect that whenever a politician will do the unpopular work. Mm. No, certainly it hasn't done me any harm, but I suppose when I made my decision and, and stood over my views and how I felt on, on the issue, um, look, I was prepared to risk my seat. I was prepared to lose my seat if necessary. Um, just to stand over my principles and, and stand for my beliefs and I will never have any regrets in doing that and I do want to sincerely thank the people of Leash Offaly mm -hmm. who put their trust in me and re-elected me and who got in behind me to support me when you know I was in the midst of a campaign that was very very hostile and again um, totally biased I mean certainly the media had me written off there were many uh, media pundits who regard themselves as being experts in politics had me written off and had the seat gone but again that was the bias coming through and the fact that they couldn't leave their own personal views one side mm -hmm. to give clear and, and balanced commentary you know it was wrong but it was down to the people and and, and of course you look I'm here and re-elected and that's the grace of God that did that I've no doubt about that and um, that I'm here to represent my people who have their faith in me. I'm here to stand for the, the right to life and will continue to do so uh, as long as I'm elected. Yeah, and I think it shows all of us that there is room for politicians with values such as yours in a country that seems to be maybe headed the opposite direction, but mm. obviously there's a lot of respect there for politicians like yourself who are fearless, essentially, when it comes to standing up for what's right. Absolutely. No, there, there, there certainly is support and I would encourage other people, particularly other women, you know, stand up and, and be counted and make sure your voice is heard because we need more people um, to do the same. There's a handful of us in there and while we're, we're a mighty little army, uh, we do need more support and we do need people to put themselves forward in elections, you know, whether it be as independents or we'd aim to. We need those people to come forward and we need to make sure that our voice is represented at every level, at local level in politics, but also national level. And I would encourage, and that's what I want to say to people uh, watching in here today, you know, uh, don't be afraid, take courage in the fact that we're on the right side and um, the right to life is non-negotiable. And certainly, you know, I certainly would never ever have any regrets for standing up. I wouldn't have any regrets either had I lost my seat. And, and I say that in, in all sincerity. Yeah, well, it's an inspiration for all of us.